Good to please bow with me in prayer this morning. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, once again for meeting here with us. We thank you for the worship that you've allowed us to offer up to you through Christ by the Spirit. And Lord, I pray that right now you would bless the preaching of your word, that you would enable me to preach from the overflow of being filled with your Spirit. And God, that you would anoint me to preach your word with power. And Lord, I pray that you would give us ears to hear, minds that are attentive, and hearts that are receptive. And I pray that we would receive the Word of God as the Word of God today, and not as the Word of man. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, this morning's title of the message is, Mom, Busy or Blossoming? Busy or Blossoming? Now, I want to start off... That title may sound, sound kind of weighty, and I want to tell you where that title came from. Is My son's playing baseball, and uh, as we go to the baseball games, I, I've noticed something. I've noticed busy moms everywhere. As a matter of fact, I, I've even listened in on, on some of their conversation. And usually what I see at the baseball game is a mom with about three or four kids hanging on to her, and each of them has a box of chicken nuggets in their hand, and they're going from one ball game to another ball game to another ball game. And I hear a mother say, well, I, I've got to, I've got to, as soon as this game's over, I've got to throw them in the kids, or, or throw them in the car, stop by McDonald's, and we've got to make our way over to another ball game. And it seems like that is an epidemic here in Edmond, right? And so I want to ask you a question, mom. Are you busy or are you blossoming? And by the time this message is over, you'll know where I'm coming from. Right now, I'd like to start with just some funny things that I came across. You know you've turned into a mom. That's the title of this, okay? You, you know you've turned into a mom when, number one, you automatically double knot everything you tie. Number two, you find yourself humming the Barney song as you do the dishes. I like this one. Number three, you hear a baby cry in a grocery store and you automatically begin to sway back and forth gently. Number four, you actually start to like the smell of strained carrots mixed with applesauce. You spend all your, you spend a half hour searching for your sunglasses only to have your teenager say, Mom, what's wrong with wearing those on top of your head? <laughs> and number six, you're out having a nice romantic meal with your husband, and the next thing you know, you have reached across the table and you're cutting up his steak. Some things my mother taught me. My mother taught me religion. You better pray that that will come out of the carpet. <laughs> she taught me logic. Because I said so, that's why. My mother taught me how to meet a challenge. Answer me when I talk to you and don't talk back. My mother taught me foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear. You never know when you might have an emergency. I don't know about that. My mother taught me irony. Keep laughing and I'll give you something to laugh about. I like this one. My mother taught me the science of osmosis. Shut your mouth and eat your supper. I don't know how that's possible, but hey. My mother taught me contortionism. Will you look at the dirt on the back of your neck? <laughs> My mother taught me behavior modification. Stop acting like your father. <laughs> My mother taught me envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in this world who don't have a wonderful mother like you do. My mother taught me justice. One day, I hope you'll have kids who turn out just like you. <laughs> well, there you have it. 
I want to ask if you would to open your Bibles this morning to Luke's, Luke's account of the gospel, Luke chapter 10. And we're going to seek to answer that question this morning. Mom, busy or blossoming? Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Now, here's what I love about this, this particular sermon. It's just directed towards mom, but really, it's for all of us. Really, it's for all of us. And so I pray that you won't check out, fathers and men, that we won't check out as this message is being preached, that teenagers will not check out thinking that this message is only for mom. No, the principles taught in this message really apply to everyone. And so let's look at our text. We're going to read there, verse 38, and we're going to read through uh, verse 42. It says, while they were traveling, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted. Notice that. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and she asked the Lord, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. And notice what the Lord says. The Lord said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But one thing is necessary. Moms, we need to hear that this morning. You are worried and upset about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice and it will not be taken away from her. I believe that this is a message we all need to hear, but especially in light of the things that I've seen, mothers need to hear this morning. The Bible says that they came to a certain village or a certain place. Now we know from other passages of Scripture that the certain place is referring to Bethany. Bethany is the place where Martha and Mary lived. Their brother, their brother was Lazarus, the one whom Jesus Christ raised from the dead. Jesus feels welcomed in their home. Jesus would frequent their home on several occasions. By the way, side note, is Jesus welcomed in your home? Isn't that a great home? To have a home where Jesus is welcome. No matter what time of day it is, no matter what you're watching on television, no matter what type of conversation you're having, that's a blessed home where Jesus is welcome every hour of every day. And that's what we see here with this home is that Jesus felt welcomed into this home. Now, it seems that Martha is the older sister. We know that she has a younger sister by the name of Mary. And the scripture seems to suggest that Martha, that Martha is the owner of the home. Now look there at your text, verse 38. It says, while they were traveling, he entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him or welcomed him into her home. So it seems like Martha is the older. Martha is the owner. But notice what the scripture says, that she had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet. Now, some people want to try and say that this is Mary Magdalene. However, there's nothing in the passage that seems to suggest that, okay? This is, this is just Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. She had a sister named Mary, once again, verse 39, who also, notice what she does. Notice her position. Mary would sit at the feet of Jesus. She would sit at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. Now, sitting at the feet of Jesus was the posture of a learner. So here she is, sitting at the feet of Jesus, wanting to learn from him. She knew that he was the Messiah and taught truth, and so she wanted to show her devotion. She wanted to express her worship. So here she is, sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning, learning, from Jesus. Now what's Martha doing? Now I know a lot of women have a, from what I hear, some women, I say a lot, I'll say some, all right? Some women have issue, take issue with this passage of scripture because they feel like Martha is getting a raw deal. 
I mean, think about it. Jesus is coming to your house. Martha wants everything to be in order. She wants the floor swept and mopped. She wants every table dusted. Every cobweb gone out of the corner. She wants to make sure the meal is ready. She wants to be a great hostess. She wants to demonstrate hospitality. Are those things necessarily bad? Are those things bad? Absolutely not. It's not bad to want to show hospitality. It's not bad to want to be a gracious host. It's not bad to clean your house, to prepare a meal, and want to give your best. But what the passage seems to suggest is that Martha's priorities were misplaced. Martha was concerned about how much she could get done for the Lord. Martha's theology was do, 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 right? And yes, the pun is intended there, right? Some of you get what I mean, all right? Yeah, that, that's, that, that, that was her theology. It was just about how much she could do. And that's the way the Lord saw it, as nothing more than do. Okay, now you're getting it. But that's all she would do. That was her theology. How much can I do for the Lord? I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to do this. I've got to be here. I've got to go there. I've got all these tasks ahead of me. I've got task number one. I've got task number two. And I can't move on to task number two until I get task number one done. And then the, the next thing you know, you get task number two done. And next thing you know, what has a, task number three shows its head. And so then you move on from task number two, and now you move on to task number three. And, and, and by the time you get task number three done, guess what happens? Now you realize there's a task number four. And so now you tell yourself, I've got so many tasks, I've got to start getting it done right now because the Lord cares about how much I do. And so I will get around, I will get around to my quiet time later. And you know what? It never happens. Because a busy mom never runs out of task to do. Amen, mothers? There is always, can we just agree, moms? There's always something that needs to be done. And so there's Martha. And so some of, some of you ladies this morning may be thinking that Martha's getting a raw deal. I mean, here she is trying to be gracious and trying to express hospitality, that all these things need to be done, and where's Mary? My, my goodness, where's Mary? There's Mary sitting over there at the feet of Jesus. Doesn't Mary realize that we have all these tasks, that we have all these things that need to get done, that we have a lot of things to, to do? And she's over there sitting at the feet of Jesus. Some would think that perhaps Mary's being lazy, shucking her responsibility, expecting Martha to do it all. But that's not the case. Don't read that into this passage because that's not what this passage is saying. And the reason I know that is because Jesus does not rebuke her, does he? Jesus does not rebuke Mary. As a matter of fact, he commends Mary, doesn't he? But uh, who does he rebuke? He rebukes Martha. Now, it's a gentle rebuke. Jesus is gentle with her. Jesus is gracious. But he commends Mary, and he rebukes Martha. So, those of you who are quick to run to Martha's defense... It may be a sign that you are busy more than you are blossoming. This morning, as you look at your life, mothers, who are you characterized more by? Are you, does Martha characterize your life? You're constantly running from ball field to ball field, from one task to another task. 
And if time permits, you'll get around to sitting at the feet of Jesus. Or can you say, you know what, my life is like Mary's. I'm going to guard my time with the Lord, and I'm going to spend time at His feet, and then all this other stuff can wait. You know what your children need most from you, moms? And by the way, I'm talking to all mothers. I don't care if you have little kids, teenagers, or grown adults. I need, I'm 30, 38 years old. I'll be 39 this year. And I still need to see this in my mom. You know what I need? I don't need a mom who's running around going from one task to another task, trying to get everything done, trying to make everything perfect. Martha was a people pleaser, wasn't she? Trying to make everybody happy. Trying to please everyone. Neglecting the Lord. You know what your children need? They need a mom who sits at the feet of Jesus. Not a mom who's busy, but a mom who is blossoming, growing in her relationship with Christ. There are some differences here between Martha and Mary, as you've already noticed. But notice what Jesus says to Martha, verse 41. The Lord answered her. Now notice he says her name twice. We see, the, we see the tenderness in which Jesus is dealing with her. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha. You are worried and upset about many things. You're overwhelmed. Hello, moms. You're overwhelmed. You're stressed. You're anxious, Martha, about so much. You're busy. You're task-driven. But Martha, only one thing is necessary. Only one thing. And Mary, she's made the right choice. And what she has done, and what she is receiving, what she is experiencing, will not be taken away from her. And we'll talk about what that is. The first thing I want you to know this morning is that there was a difference in their perspective. There was a difference in their perspective. Martha's perspective is this, is that the Lord cares about how much I do. That Jesus cares about how much I do. I've got to do all this stuff because what... What's most important is how many tasks I get done in a day. Are there any mothers out there like that? You've got your to-do list. And you determine a successful day by how much you've completed on that to-do list. That's Martha. That was her perspective of life. Life's about how much I can get done, how many tasks I can get fulfilled in a certain day. And if I get every kid to every practice on time and I get, them, I get them all fed, then I've done my job. And, I'm a, and, and, and Jesus is happy with me because I fulfilled, I fulfilled all my tasks. I've, I've checked off everything on my to-do list so I feel good about myself. But you know what? Eventually you know what's going to happen? You keep that up. I don't know. I don't have to tell you, do I? You're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to get burnt out. You're going to get stressed. And the next thing you know, you're wanting to lop off heads and pile them up at the gate. You know what I'm saying? So there's a different in perspective. Mary, Martha thought, man, the Lord cares about how much I get done, how many tasks I fulfill. What was Mary's perspective? Is the Lord is concerned about how much time I spend with Him. Martha, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Task-driven, people-centered, people-pleaser. Go from here, go from here. Martha is like, you know what? What the Lord wants from me is to spend time at His feet, worshiping Him. Listening, learning. 
Oh, yes, I have tasks to do, but I'm not going to put the task before spending time with him. Do you know that your perspective in life will determine your priority? You see, not only do we see a difference in perspective here, we also see a different in, difference in their priorities, right? Because of Martha's perspective, what was Martha's perspective? The Lord cares about how much I get done. As a result of that perspective, you know, she was a task-driven person. And so her priorities, what, revolved around her task. She put her task before the Lord. Why? Because that was her perspective. And so her priorities reflected her perspective of life. And so what were Martha's priorities? Well, I've got to get all this stuff done. What was Mary's perspective? The Lord cares about how much time I spend with him. So what was her priority? To spend time at the feet of Jesus. To spend time at his feet before everything else. Now here's the difference. If your perspective is wrong, your priorities are going to be wrong. And listen to me, moms. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to end up borrowing time from your devotion in order to invest it in the world. You're, either going to, you're going to do one of two things. You're going to borrow from your devotional life in order to spend more time doing worldly things or you're going to borrow from wor the world in order to spend more time in devotion. Which one's right? Martha did the first, didn't she? Martha said, I've got so much to do. I've got so much to do. I've got to borrow from my devotional time in order to get it all done. Hello. That's speaking to some people this morning, isn't it? Not just moms, but men, fathers, youth. I've got so much to get done. I've got to borrow from my devotional time in order to get all the tasks completed. Mary said, no, no, no. I've got so much to get done today. I'm going to borrow from my task in order to spend more time with Jesus. It was Martin Luther who said, I've got so much to do today. I've got to spend at least three hours in prayer to get it all done. Now, we think the opposite, don't we, if we're not careful. I've got so much to do today. I don't have time to spend at the Lord's feet. I've got to jump up out of bed, get in the shower, get dressed in order to get it all done. And the next thing you know, a day goes by and you haven't spent any time at the feet of Jesus. Two days go by and you haven't spent any time at the feet of Jesus. Three, three days go by and you haven't spent any time at the feet of Jesus. And you wonder why you're stressed out and overwhelmed and anxious and worried about so much. And the Lord is saying, Martha, Martha, You're worried and stressed out and overwhelmed about so many things. But what's really necessary is that you spend time at my feet. Moms, are you busy or are you blossoming? Unbiblical perspective leads to unbiblical priorities. There's a passage in the Bible in Luke chapter 14. Don't turn there, but please listen. And there was a king who planned a supper. And he set out an invitation for all these dignitaries to come to the supper. And here's, here's the response that he received. He, he sent out an invitation. And here's how they responded. One of them said, I bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I pray that you will excuse me. I don't have time to come to your supper. I've got things I've got to get done. Another man said, I just bought five yoke of oxen and, I, and I must, I've got to go and get them. I've got to go. I don't have time. Sorry, please excuse me. I don't have, I, I, I've just bought some oxen. I've got to go get them. Another man said, I cannot come. I, I've just got married. Therefore, I can't come. So they had all these excuses for not coming to the invitation. Now, here's the thing. The true reason they could not come is not because they had bought oxen. The true reason they could not come is because the oxen had bought them.
The true reason you don't spend time at the feet of Jesus is not because you've got so much to do. It's because all the things that you have to do have gotten you. A fairly wealthy man one day was in a tragic car wreck and the policeman arrived on the scene and the policeman began to help the man and the, and the man, the first thing the, the, the wealthy man said is, oh my BMW, and this is not against any of you who own BMWs, okay? Oh my BMW, oh my BMW, oh my BMW. And the policeman said, sir, I'm sorry about your BMW, but we have got to get you to the hospital. Your right arm has been severed off. And the man said, oh, my Rolex, oh, my Rolex. Now, <laughs> that's the pressure release in the sermon, all right? The pressure was building up. We needed to have a pressure release. But here's my point. Misplaced priorities, right? All right that's foolish, isn't it? But you know what is foolish? Is that when we neglect our time at the feet of Jesus in order to get all of our tasks done. Foolish. What did Jesus tell us? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all of these things will be what? Provided for you. What do I hope the Lord does with this sermon is I hope that the Lord takes if you're a Martha, that the Lord enables you to be a Mary this morning. Yes, there's, there, there's time. There's, there's a time to, 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 to do things and get tasks accomplished. Understand, what Martha was doing was not bad. I'm not saying that. But Martha's priorities were misplaced. You understand? Martha said, I've got to get all this stuff done. Then I'll spend time with the Lord. And guess what happened? It never, it, it's not going to happen. Mary said, I'm going to spend time with the Lord first, then I'll get all this stuff done. And Jesus said, Martha, wrong. Mary, what? Right. So there's a difference in their perspective. There's a difference in their priorities. And there's a difference in their posture. Notice their posture. This is, this is key. What's Martha's posture? She's up running around, isn't she? Some of you can identify with that. She's up running around trying to get all this stuff done. That's her posture. You know what that's a posture of? That's a posture of self-reliance. Isn't it? Relying upon herself to get it all done. What's, what's Mary's posture? Total dependence. If I'm going to get all this stuff done that needs to be done, man, I've got to spend time at his feet. What's your posture? A posture of self-reliance? Relying upon your own strength and your own power? What does that result in? What did Jesus say? Martha, Martha, you're, you're anxious and worried about so much. What was Mary's posture? Oh, bowed at the feet of Jesus. What's your posture this morning? up, running around, a, a posture of self-reliance. I mean, because that's really what we're saying. Listen, when we neglect our time with the Lord, when we neglect our devotional time, life, when we borrow from our devotional life in order to fulfill our task, when we do that, you know what we're really saying? Lord, I got this. And guess what? We don't. And sometimes it takes us hitting burnout before we realize it. And if I can spare any mothers this morning from that, that's what I want to do. You don't got this. <laughs> and if you think you do, you're going to hit rock bottom. The only way you're going to be able to mother effectively, and, and listen to me, young ladies, who will one day perhaps be moms, Listen, you can only do it in the Lord's strength, His power. Spend time at His feet. 
Don't borrow from your devotional time in order to spend it on task. Borrow from your task in order to spend it on your devotional time. Lastly, look at this. There's a difference in their peace. Martha didn't have any peace, did she? You know why she didn't have any peace? Because her perspective was wrong, her priorities were wrong, her posture was wrong, therefore there was no peace. She comes to the Lord and says, Lord, don't you care? Now follow this, lady. She's trying, she's trying to be a blessing to the Lord, isn't she? And as a result of her misplaced priorities, instead of being a blessing, it's almost as if she becomes a burden. Lord, don't you care? Well, of course he cares. As a matter of fact, he cares so much that he wants to minister to Martha, but Martha's not in the position for Christ to minister to her. Are you hearing that? Oh, he's ministering to Mary. Why? Because Mary's at his feet. He wants to minister to Martha, but Martha's what? Too busy. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve all alone, to do all these, to do all these things, Lord? So tell her to give me a hand. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things but one thing is necessary. So we would say that Martha has no peace. I'm not saying that Martha's not saved, but what I am saying is this, is that the peace, her peace, is not there. But Martha, but Mary's peace is. Notice what he says in the last part of verse 42. Mary has made the right choice, and it will not be taken from her. What will not be taken from her? Her peace. Her peace. Her peace. There she is, peacefully sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning from him. And what is Jesus doing? He's ministering to her. Peace. He wants to minister to Martha. Martha is just too busy. She has no peace. Two artists were asked to paint in a contest they were asked to paint a portrait of peace one artist paints this beautiful portrait of of a calm ocean with the sun setting calm waters with the sun beautifully setting in the background that was his perspective of peace the next artist his portrait was of a raging sea Dark clouds, thunder and lightning, the water splashing up against the shore, banging against the rocks. It was a picture of total chaos. But down in the corner, there were two rocks. And sitting upon the rocks was a bird singing. That's peace. Is that in the midst of the chaos all around you, you've got the joy of the Lord in your heart. And the only way you're going to have that is if you put yourself in a position to experience the ministry of Jesus. What did Jesus tell us? Jesus said this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, you must not be troubled. Now listen to me. We don't know what tomorrow brings, do we? No one knows the mercies that tomorrow may bring. No one knows the peace that tomorrow bring, may bring. No one knows the miseries that tomorrow may bring. No one knows the good that tomorrow may bring. No one knows the bad that tomorrow may bring. No one knows the prosperity that tomorrow may bring. No one knows the afflictions that tomorrow might bring. No one knows the liberty that tomorrow might bring. No one knows the bonds that tomorrow might bring. But what we do know is that if we spend time at the feet of Jesus, that no matter what tomorrow brings, we'll have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen? 
So what's my application for moms this morning? Application? Remember you can't do it. Remember you can't do it. Number two, run to Christ. Every day, priority of every day. Remember you can't do it. First thing, run to Christ. Number two, rely on his strength. Number three, rest in his presence. Every day, moms, remember you can't do it. Run to Jesus. Rely upon his strength. Rest in his presence. A mother was one day cleaning her house. As she was walking through the house, her little boy, Lauren, this is the way it's going to be with you one day when Mason starts walking. You need to start praying now for that, I'm telling you. But you're going to be, you're going to be cleaning house. And every time this mother would turn around, there was her little boy bumping into the back of her legs. She would go from one end of the house to the other end of the house. And every now and then, she would feel that little boy bump in the back of her legs. Every time she would turn around, there he, there he would be, and she would bump into him. She tried to give him different tasks to do and try to keep him busy, but every time she turned around, there he was bumping into her. The mother finally got frustrated. She said, why are you following me wherever I go? The little boy said, Mom, in Sunday school, they told us to follow the feet of Jesus. And he said, since I can't see him, I'm following you. Moms, whether your children are babies, teenagers, or grown adults, they still need to see you following Jesus. The most important thing you can do is not be a mother who's busy, but be a mother who's blossoming, growing in Christ because you're spending time at his feet. I'm going to ask if you would to bow your heads this morning. I said at the beginning of this sermon that even though this was directed towards mothers, you can clearly see how the principles taught are true for all of us. Men, it's true for us. Perhaps you're here this morning and you've never trusted in Jesus. There's never been a time in your life where you've truly repented of sin and placed your faith in Christ. Perhaps you're a mom here this morning and you're not saved. You're not saved. There's never been a time in your life where you have truly trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Perhaps there's fathers here this morning and, and, and there's never been a time in your life where you truly, where you truly trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You don't know whether or not you're forgiven. You don't know whether or not if you were to die today, would you be ushered into heaven. You just don't know. There's a lot of doubts. Your life has been characterized by living for yourself, not living for Jesus. Listen, we want to extend this morning. Christ wants to extend to you this morning an opportunity for salvation. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. That Jesus came, went to the cross and died in your place, bearing the penalty of your sin. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. He was buried and three days later he rose from the dead. He is exalted to the right hand throne of God even now. And one day he is coming again. And you need him because for all of sin and falling short of the glory of God, we've all sinned. And because of our sin, we deserve death. We deserve eternal separation from God in hell. That's what we deserve. That's what we've earned for ourselves because of our sinful choices. And the only hope that we have is to run to Christ, to embrace Christ, to believe upon Christ, to confess Christ. And so have you run to Christ? Have you embraced Christ? Have you confessed Christ? Here in a moment, I'm going to ask for everyone to stand. And for those of you who need to be saved, I'm going to be standing down front. Other pastors will be down front. Please come up to one of us and say, you know what? I'm coming this morning. 
to give my life to Jesus. I'm coming to receive his salvation. Others of you, perhaps moms, perhaps there's some dads here today or husbands who want to come pray for their wives, to come pray together. Perhaps there's some mothers who want to come pray with their kids. I don't know. Just come pray and ask God to help you to not be busy, but to be, but, but, but to be a mother who blossoms. That you would spend time at the feet of Jesus on a daily basis. Let's pray for this. For it is in God's will. And he will answer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. Help us to respond to the leading of your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand and begin to come now as the Lord leads? You begin to make your way this morning. Everyone